Hi guys, this is Mike from The Last Corvette. Uh, today's video is uh, really just showing you the pieces and what it takes to do a either a headlight repair or a headlight lens replacement on a C6 Corvette. This covers 05 through 13. It also uh, works on a base and your Z models. Um, let's start with the main uh, structure. Um, you got your reflector for your turn signal, running light. Right next to it is a projector for your high intensity discharge low beam. And right next to that is your high beam projector. This is a halogen. This is a HID. This is just a regular fluorescent bulb, dual filament bulb. Uh, and then this is your ballast. I'm going to start zooming in on some of the stuff here. So most of the most of the uh, uh, on the on the back side of the headlight, most of your bulbs can be removed. So this is just your regular twist on, twist off. You got dust caps to go here. Uh, you can definitely replace, unplug, and replace the actual bulb if it ever goes bad. Uh, same thing with the ballast. I'll show you that in a minute. And then your high beam is just a regular halogen um, bulb with a plug. So if you flip this over. You can see the back side, um, that's your cover for your uh, ballast. So that's how you would remove the four screws to gain access to the ballast itself uh, if you had to replace it or work on it. And then you got one, two, three. Those are your mounting points. This is actually how it mounts to the core support there. Uh, 10 mil socket and, uh, and comes right off. This is the main plug. And then you have one more plug that goes to your uh, turn signal. And then keep an eye and remember these three holes. You got to remove those screws before you attempt to even disassemble this headlight or a good practice is to remove these three screws and obviously these are on the accessible from the outside or in the back side of the headlight, uh, before you start prying on this headlight. Um, the reason is you will damage your inner bezel, the black one in my case, if you do. And the reason behind that, and I'll get into all that stuff, guys, here. So the top of the inner bezel is actually mounted to your clear plastic lens. The bottom, however, is tied to your main housing from the outside. And what that does, it creates uh, like a rigid setup, actually a proper setup. Uh, it gives you more, uh, more stability. But the issue is, is that if you forget to take these three screws out and you, and you put it in the oven and you start baking it and shaking it, and when you start peeling it, depending where you start to make your first incision to peel it back, well, guess what? You're going to start breaking off the tabs actually on the inner bezel. And in some cases you can re-glue them back. In some cases it actually cracks the bezel and then you're, you know, SOL and you're looking for another uh, inner <laughs> bezel like I am for the passenger side, but for a different reason. So um, if you guys follow my videos, I did touch a little bit on GM, um, especially older GM uh, headlights. They all had really two things in common. They all had water intrusion issues and they all had um, just, just basically um, an awful, awful way of sealing the headlight, uh, the headlights up. Uh, this is all GM Vistian um, products. Let me show you. So right now we have everything off, right? So we have the inner bezel off and the lens off, but I'm gonna show you something from the back so you can actually see it for yourself. You can see my kitchen right now, correct? All kinds of daylight. And normally what happens, you got a dust gap here, you got a dust gap here. Obviously you got another halogen bulb here and this is just a bulb with a seal, gasket seals up. Normally what happens is 
Uh, during assembly, during the course or the life of the vehicle, somebody has to go in there or will go in there at the dealer or do it yourself and peel one of these dust caps off either to replace your low beam light, high beam light, or maybe they switch to an aftermarket um, LED light for the running and the turn signal. But what happens there is if the seal is not proper, you're gonna get water intrusion and all kinds of road debris into your headlight. And then in the later years, I think I touched on that also, they switched to a, they went, they went away from the dust cap that just kind of slips over to a hinged sealed um, cap that locks in place. But the issue was still there because if you forget to lock it in or a latch breaks it's going to pop open uh, all that moisture all that crap is going to get into your headlight so in my case the driver's side headlight this one is in pretty decent shape as far as the the inners not a lot of dirt the passenger side was extremely looked like it was off-roading uh, they, they took this Corvette off-roading and the reason is is I actually before this whole project started last year I went in and peeled back the same inner wheel liner, but for a different reason. I was actually converting my uh, fog lights over to LED bulbs, and I noticed that this this uh, high beam uh, dust cap was, that was on a passenger side though, uh, it was off and it was actually laying inside the wheel liner. So that explains all the sand and all the stuff, Oklahoma dirt, right? So this one, I haven't touched it, I haven't cleaned it. The only thing I did last night is I uh, put it through three cycles, the heat, got the lens off, and you can see it's pretty clean. So I'm gonna clean it all up, obviously, before I reseal it. But rule of thumb is you really wanna use some compressed air, clean everything as much as you can, because once you reassemble and reseal it, you will um, eventually see all the, you know, the fines come out and you know and kind of ruin your whole retrofit or you know your rebuild so when i was doing my passenger side headlight as i was doing it i said you know what i'm not even going to screw around with it and and try to make it completely perfect because my um inner bezel has a little bit of damage here and so i'm going to start like i said i i'm already looking for a black inner bezel or more than likely i'm going to have to buy a whole headlight I already got another lens just for the passenger side on the way. So, so I'll have to redo that side eventually, probably at the end of this year. It's not a big deal. Still, everything is fine. So, um, moving on. So, we know that uh, uh, these headlights have to be put through a heat cycle to separate them. Unless something drastic happened, right? What I've always done in the past is um and i normally work in a garage i have a, a setup in the garage where i, can, I have a electric uh, oven there preheat to 230 and don't follow instructions unless you're super uncomfortable and it's especially not winter but summer outside in my case it's winter and i'm going to explain what i mean by that Preheat it to 230 and leave it at 230. Don't shut it off. Put your headlight in. And I always say invest into a simple, decent infrared heat gun. What you want to do is you're going to be able to point, pinpoint to whatever structure and check the base or the core temperature. In this case, you want to get this headlight housing to about 200 degrees. Uh, at 200 degrees, your seal will start to separate. Not some some say it's easy. Most of the time, what I've came across is it's not going to be as easy as you think. You're still going to have to go in there and pry it open. So the first cycle, preheat, let it sit there. It usually takes about five minutes or so for it to get up to uh, 200. You can go to about 210, but that's really the the the, the limit. And the reason is is because you're heating everything up, and especially this this is fine, but you're heating. You obviously want to remove like your drains and your vents those can stay on but you got your plugs you still got your a lot of rubber um and, and plastic thin plastic everywhere so 200 won't melt your tabs uh they'll become soft but um uh it, they won't just like melt right off so you're gonna take it out and you're gonna start prying and normally you'll see pry marks so one of the things is doesn't matter which headlight you use 
or you work on or which method you use, you're going to see some pry marks. The good thing about it is when everything is reassembled, they're going to be invisible. You're also going to probably break some of these tabs and it's okay. Some can be re-glued back on. Most of these tabs are just there to kind of align and center the new bezel. What really holds the, the, the inner, I'm sorry, the outer lens in place is obviously the, the, the epoxy, right? So you put it in, you align it, and, and that's it. And like on the, on the C6, they use these tabs, these snap-in tabs to also hold your outer seal in place that we touched on before. So... What you do is you get it up first heat cycle. You'll, you're probably going to be able to get up uh, and break one of the. You can start here on the flat, and you're going to need a uh, a screwdriver. And I always use a wedge for uh, like your door trim. Just get yourself a kit so you pry open. You're going to have to kind of go under the lip, so the headlight sits in this groove, right? You're going to have to go in. As you can see, there's a mark right there in and then pry open and then stick your tool in and kind of start working your way around. The first time you're not gonna get much, you're probably gonna get maybe from here to here, but that's good. Because now the heat is gonna penetrate uh, not only on the outside, but also from the inside. You're gonna create air gap. And don't leave any plastic tools in place, pull everything out. On the second cycle, you're gonna follow the same instructions and you're gonna get more. On a third cycle, you should be able to really work this entire headlight and take your time, don't try to just yank on and pry you're gonna start breaking stuff but on the third fourth time it will come apart easy and it's all about just trying to take your time because more you yank on it more you pull on it more of these tabs are gonna break off which is fine as long as the main structure is not damaged because at the end of the day no one is gonna see it they serve really no purpose like I said besides alignment but you can still align your outer counter to your inner uh, without without the without the locking tabs. Um, if you guys have any questions or or, or uh, things you guys want to add, you can comment below or you can go to uh, my Instagram account. I do post on there. It's uh, Last Corvette. I post a lot of pictures, some videos, and just quick updates. So this is my final um, stage here before I start reassembling. Now let's touch on uh, getting this old seal, this old epoxy off. As you can see, when I was actually removing the old lens, some of it came out. So you see that nice clean groove. What you're gonna do is no easy way around it. Once again, doesn't matter if it's a C6, an Audi or a uh, Ford. You have to go in and you're gonna have to use a heat gun and work in about two to three inch sections using a small screwdriver. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna heat this up you're gonna go in and, and using the, the edge of your screwdriver, pry up the sides first on both sides, then scoop underneath and keep working two to three inch um, sections until you get this entire lens or the groove clean. And you wanna make sure you get as much of that gunk, if not all, out because you want that new clear lens to sit in perfect, nice and tight, not only for the seal, but also for the contour of the headlight. So. Take your time, heat gun is your friend. You can use a hair dryer, but heat gun obviously gets you there faster. And just but careful, don't sit there and try to distort the headlight. Just work out until this is pliable and workable, and then you can peel it off. Um, and uh, and then once, uh, once this is all uh, clean, then at that point, when the groove is clean, at that point you can actually go through and, and blow everything out, clean your headlight, clean your projectors, and uh, get the inner main housing prepped. Now, this here is my new headlight lens with um, the plastic over it so the outer doesn't get damaged. This, in comparison, is the one that I remove. And if you go like this, you will see what kind of condition this was really in. And, and not only do you see the spider cracks and the distortion just from the heat uh, of the actual light output, but also the sun. But like I said, this has been wet sanded and, and it made a huge difference. But I mean, there, there, there's no way you can save um, these uh, uh, C6 uh, outer lenses. You gotta replace them. And this is a good do-it-yourself project if you take your time, if you follow all directions and videos, there's tons of them out there. I'm just showing you the main 
main stuff here. So one thing I touched on is before is if your if your Corvette is well, actually, to be honest, I'm just going to say it like this. Buy the kit, doesn't matter where you get it, Amazon, eBay, buy the kit that comes with the new outer seals because when you remove your outer seals, they're going to be dry rotted, they're going to come apart. So don't think you're going to cheap out and, and, and save yourself $30 or $20 in a lot of cases and reuse your outer seals. That's not the case. You're going to uh, spend more money and then have to order a pair of new seals that go around the headlight. That's like the finishing touch that kind of covers everything. And that's also the trim that you see around the headlight when it's mounted. All right, so remember these holes on the bottom that I showed you? There's three of them. Well, you got screws that go in there. Before you touch, so you remove the headlight, remove one, two, three. You gotta remove them. If you don't remove them, you're gonna break the inner bezel. And let me show you how this looks. So this is my original black inner bezel. Now the, the driver's side is in great shape, but I will touch on another point that I think everybody should know. As you can see, you got one, two, three, four. Four mounting points inside the inner bezel. So you don't have to worry about these when you're actually separating the outer lens from the um, main housing because you will remove these screws these torque screws when actually the old lens is separated like this and you'll be able to remove the inner bezel on the bottom side you got some tabs these are locating tabs so it doesn't move around but see this one two and then you got a third one here these are actually connected to the bezel and you can see if you don't follow the instruction to remove the three bottom screws first when you start prying, especially if you start prying from the bottom, you're gonna snap them off. In most cases, you can re-glue them on, uh, hoping that the alignment is gonna be somewhat close. Uh, or in a lot of cases, you'll actually put it, because this is pretty thin, you'll put a stress crack uh, that will be visible through the clear lens now, and you're gonna be in the same, uh, basically, position as I am for the passenger side, but for a different reason. There will be a cracked or a damaged inner housing, in my case, the actual paint um, is peeling. And I'm gonna, before I touch on that, here's, here's so on the inside, you got torque screws again. This is for your inner ring. So if you wanna change, normally they're chrome, if you wanna change it to the color of your car, a different color, you would remove them and get them painted separate, or you would remove them, then remove your, um, uh, your turn signal slash running light, um, uh, lens uh, if you had the inner uh, bezel painted to a different color like you know some guys go black if they had yellow red or vice versa so let me flip this over now I mean, we're getting close to pretty much uh, uh, finishing up this video so this inner and it's obviously super clear compared to this even if I have the I still have the, the, the plastic on it and I'll show you something. So my my passenger side headlight has imperfections here, and it was actually the the coating was peeling back. And what I did is I kind of cleaned everything up and put some black touch up paint. It's not visible. It's not something that just comes right out. It's not like it's here somewhere, but it's there. But I'm going to tell you something. So these are obviously weathered. They've been in the heavy sun. They've been driven. Um, the inner coating is was definitely i don't know if it was painted i almost want to say it was dipped okay and they didn't use enough clear or enamel on it to protect it because right now so i had to go in and before i mounted this i had to go in and kind of wipe everything with, with a microfiber don't go in with a paper towel but even with nice wet microfiber you kind of go through and you clean up all your bezels and all your grooves and edges and on the driver's side, I didn't have to see all these ridges here. It's like brand new. The driver's, or I'm sorry, the passenger side was, I actually had to take a Q-tip and clean all this stuff. It was just a mess. But like I said, I already knew what the problem was from the beginning, and I knew that I was going to be replacing this uh, inner bezel eventually. So next time it's off, I'm going to do a better job cleaning it and, um, and so on. So what I'm trying to get to is, Try to do it as fast as you can. No solvent, no soap, just 
nice microfiber, slightly wetted, wipe everything down or blow everything off because the inner coating is super easy uh, to damage and scratch and you will lose, leave smear marks. And you know what I try to do my best and there's a few of them, you're not gonna be able to see them at all, but they're gonna be there. Uh, and the reason is the coating becomes soft and pliable over time. And without actually re stripping everything and removing, reapplying primer and, uh, and, uh, and repainting them, you're gonna end up with this. But we're not gonna go that route. This is still a very, very good inner bezel. Uh, and, but that's just a tip. Don't go in there and try to rub things off because it's, it's, it's literally going to take the paint or the coating right off. And then you're going to have big old bare spots everywhere. So just nice, wet microfiber, clean everything out, use some air gun, uh, air, air, air uh, like an air gun before, just if, if you have any fine, so you don't scratch it and then wipe everything down on outside, inside, and then you can screw in your, um, inner bezel to your new headlight lens and keep everything covered in plastic until the install is done. Um, another thing too is when, when you're working on this, always, always, always wear gloves. Uh, you wanna use latex gloves. Don't ever touch the inside of the uh, lens. And for two reasons. First of all, you're gonna leave fingerprints if you don't use gloves. Second is the inner is not coated. It's not sealed. So any kind of touch or bump, you could actually scratch your lens and it's they scratch really easy because they're not coated, they're not polished out. The outer is, so the outer is, if you get some fingerprints on the outer, big deal, you can just wash it off, polish it off or whatever. The inner, you're out of luck. So you're gonna be uh, replacing that headlight lens. So here it is in a nutshell. Um, and the last step would be, you know, once they get everything cleaned out, cleared out, if some of these uh, tabs break, you can always use super glue and put them together for your own good. Like I said, some of these screwdriver marks, you can just take a blade, uh, like a, either a straight blade or a, you know even a knife, and just kind of clean them up. You know, if you want to, or just sand sand them down. It's up to you. It makes no difference. You're not going to be able to see it at all. But um, then I'm going to use my uh, Loctite product that I showed you guys before in the videos, and if you haven't seen it. Look at some of my previous videos when I go through the passenger side headlight, and then you're gonna fill it. And, and the trick is you wanna fill, when you're refilling this gap, you wanna fill it all the way to the rim, okay? All the way to the rim, like this. And then once it's filled, you're gonna immediately take your new headlight lens and you're gonna square it up and you're gonna put it in the channel. Once it's sitting in the channel, you're gonna line all your tabs. Don't worry about the seal yet. Then you're gonna, obviously the whole headlight is going to be covered in uh, some kind of a plastic or something to protect it. Then you're going to take, my method is electrical tape. Some guys use clamps. Well, when you try to clamp on a, first of all, you got to protect it regardless if you're going to use clamps, but this is all oval, radius. Use electrical tape real nice and tight and get as much pressure as you can. So you go around the headlight, then you go long ways and put as much pressure as you can on all your radiuses here, here, and anywhere else where you see movement. Once you don't see any movement, wrap that sucker up. Don't take put it in your garage unless you live in Florida or Texas where it's nice and 50s, 60s, 70s or above. Put it in your house if you're in the northern states. That way it stays around 60, 70 degrees. Let it cure for 24 hours and you're gonna peel all the plastic back. You're gonna be amazed and shocked how good it looks. And the last thing I always suggest is to run a bead of clear all-weather silicone around it to kind of finalize the headlight the way you know 100% that there's no uh, pinholes or, or uh, broken uh, seal um, uh, spots on, uh, on the actual uh, um, headlight itself. So there it is. Um, I'm gonna do another video when I reinstall this headlight. I'll show you guys the fog lights. And then from there, we're gonna move on to the rear tires. We gotta do the outer tie rod links on the rear. We're going to really start moving forward with this Corvette and, and getting it ready for, for the road. And, and hopefully when the snow stops, we're in February, but we still got a couple of months. Then we're gonna start doing some real content. We're gonna get you guys out, show you guys what Metro Detroit is all about, like I mentioned before. 
and we're really gonna try to step things up. So check us out on uh, YouTube, Last Corvette. Uh, please uh, subscribe, uh, please like our videos. If you have any questions, you can always uh, comment. I'll read all the comments. Uh, you can also hit us up on uh, Instagram, Last Corvette. Website is getting close, merch is getting close, and I'll talk to you guys later.